we've all been out on the road and seen a really overloaded vehicle. I was going onto a beach one day and there was a ute that had broken in half because it was overloaded. Now packing our four wheel drives is really important. So we're going to talk to our mate Vic and get a few tips off him because I reckon he's seen it all. Yeah Matt, look I've probably packed this four wheel drive a, you know, a thousand times to go away on trips so uh, I've got a little bit of an idea of what works and what doesn't. The biggest mistake that most people make is they try and take too much away with them. The kitchen sink and everything. You don't need to do that when you're travelling. The other thing is, is that they don't have a storage system. You can see the storage system behind me here. Everything's in a neat place. I can get to it, whatever it is. It's all tied down. It's going to stay where it is on those corrugations. And they don't realise the impact that corrugations will have on the way they've uh, packed their vehicle and set up their vehicle. They choose inappropriate equipment. You know, plastic containers that will just shatter on the corrugations. Inappropriate roof racks that just aren't strong enough to take the load and the pounding. So yeah, there's a lot to know about packing a vehicle properly for an outback trip. So Vic, what are some of your secrets to packing safely and wisely? Well mate, look, one of the things that happens is that people try and use round containers, you know, round jars, things like that, they just waste space. So if I've got something that's coming in a round jar, so like jam or something I want to take away with me, I'll take it out of that and put it into a square plastic container. That makes sense. You don't want to carry glass with you because glass breaks and then you can get badly cut yourself when you're trying to dispose of that glass. So take it out of any glass containers, use your square type containers. You can see up here everything's square, so it all fits in and makes maximum use of the area that I've got to work with. The other thing is that when you've got stuff in these boxes, they're going to move around in the corrugations. All right. Now as you start to use items, obviously things become looser in, inside the box, so you want to keep them wrapped up so they're not moving too much. I use bubble wrap. I put bubble wrap in the bottom of the containers so that absorbs that, that pounding that's happening. It softens happening. everything it up softens a bit. it all up. Part of our recovery equipment is, is heavy items like chains and, and stuff like that. Mm, yeah. So with heavier items, where should we put them in the vehicle? Well, you've got to think about the centre of gravity of the vehicle and the weight of it, and you want to keep all that heavy stuff down as low as you possibly can. That makes sense. Yeah. So like, you know, this drawer system just behind me, the drawer at the back here, that's full of all that heavy recovery gear. Try and keep all that stuff down nice and low. So that's, that's the recovery gear is also towards the front of the vehicle then, if it's at the front of that drawer. Well, it's over the back axles, and that's, that's going to be the best location for it. One of the things I don't put away in the back of the car is my snatch strap mat, because what I want to do is get to that as quick as I can. I had a situation once where I got stuck in a bog hole, the water started to come in the vehicle before I could find the strap in the back of the car. So I always keep the snatch strap down on the floor on the passenger side so I can grab it straight away if needed. Vic, that's a lot of fantastic information you've given us there, but what are your top three tips? Well, Matt, look, safety is the number one priority all the time. So keep your heavy gear down low and keep it behind a cargo barrier. Second one, square containers so you make the best use of the space you've got. And the third idea, is the third suggestion I've got, would be go on a trial run, go away for a weekend, take all your gear, see what works and see what doesn't work before you head out back. Thanks so much, Vic. Now, if this information has helped you out, Go and check out Vic's website, 4wd.net.au.